Hello and welcome to a discussion about how to read the statement of stockholders' equity and the cash flow statement. After viewing this video, you will be able to interpret the statement of stockholders' equity and interpret the cash flow statement. This video does not discuss how to prepare either statement. Let's begin with the statement of stockholders' equity. The transactions with owners are listed down the left side. Issuing common stock, repurchasing common stock, and paying dividends are transactions that occur directly with owners. The owner's equity accounts that are reported on the balance sheet are listed across. The amount of the transaction is placed in the column of the amount that changes. This statement shows that the company issued common stock, which increased the common stock account and the paid in capital accounts, repurchase common stock, which changed treasury stock, paid dividends, which decreased retained earnings, and, in and earned income, which always changes retained earnings. The ending balance is the amount that is reported on the balance sheet for each account. A cash flow statement is necessary because cash receipts and cash payments are not reported on the other three financial statements. The balance sheet reports cumulative amounts for two years and does not provide information on transactions that change the amounts from one year to the next. The income statement reports revenues earned and expenses incurred, which is not the same as cash received and cash paid. The statement of owner's equity reports transactions with owners and the related cash paid or received does not always occur in the same period. Investors and creditors need to know how much cash is generated each period and what the cash is used for. The cash flow statement tells more about the strategy of the company than any other statement because it shows how the company is positioning itself for growth. This is an example of an indirect cash flow statement. Notice the three sections, operating activities, investing activities, and financing activities. The three sections combined explain the change in cash for the current period. The cash flow statement has the three separate sections. The operating activity section reports the amount of cash generated from the day-to-day -day business during the period. The investment activity section reports the cash paid and received related to long-term assets. The financing activities section reports cash paid to and from investors and creditors. Issuing stock, buying treasury stock, and borrowing and repaying loans are financing activities. GAAP allows two different options for preparing the operating activities section of the cash flow statement. The indirect begins with net income, which is not cash. It then lists items that are reported on the income statement in the current period that were not collected or paid in cash, and items collected or paid in the current period that are not reported on the income statement. Both of these are differences between net income and cash. The indirect method statement is used by almost all U.S. companies. The indirect statement begins with net income, which is not the same as net cash. Net income comes from revenues reported when earned and expenses reported when incurred, and cash does not change the income statement. Net income, which is not cash, is reconciled to the cash generated during the period. The items listed between net income and cash generated from operating activities are items that impact cash in a different period than the current period. Depreciation is paid in prior periods when the long-term asset is purchased. Net income is reduced with depreciation, however no cash is used, so the company has more cash than net income. A gain comes from the difference in cash received in the original cost of the asset. A gain is not the cash amount received. The gain increased net income, however cash was not received. Net income is adjusted downward to get to the cash for the period. A change in current asset or current liability account is reported because these accounts represent revenues and expenses 
that are not included in net income and were not received or paid in the current period. Net income is adjusted for the change in all current assets and current liabilities except cash. When cash is not exchanged during the same time period, the revenue or expense is reported on the income statement. Accounts receivable occurs when sales are collected in a different period than the sale occurs. Accounts payable occurs because expenses were incurred and paid in a different period. Expenses also occur when an asset paid for in a previous period is used up in the current period. All the items listed between net income and the cash generated from operating activities represents differences in what is included in net income and the cash difference for the period. The second method that can be used for the operating activities section is the direct method. This method directly states cash received and cash paid using line items to note where the cash came from and what the cash was paid for. This method is used by most international companies. The direct method begins with where the cash came from and then lists what the cash was paid for. The lines on the cash flow statement correlate with the lines on the income statement. For example, cash collected from customers is the cash portion of sales. Cash paid for inventory is the cash associated with cost of goods sold. Cash paid for salaries is the cash part of the salaries expense, and so on. The total amount of cash from operating activities will be the same under the indirect or the direct method. The direct method matches revenues and expense reported when earned and incurred with the associated current asset and current liability to determine the cash that resulted during the period. Cash inflows match a revenue with a receivable. An increase in the receivable means that less cash was received than revenue. A decrease in the receivable means that more cash was received during the period than current period sales. The amount paid to suppliers for inventory is computed by using the change in inventory and the change in accounts payable. The change in inventory gives the amount of inventory purchased during the period, and the change in accounts payable determines if that inventory was paid for in a different period. Expenses are matched with the payable that occurs if the expense is paid later. For instance, interest expense is used with interest payable, and tax expense is used with tax payable. The change in the payable gives the difference in the expense and the cash paid. An increase in the payable means that less cash was paid than the expense. Prepaids are paid before the expense is incurred. The change in the prepaid gives the difference in the expense for the period and the cash paid during the period. The direct statement matches the income statement items to the balance sheet items. The indirect statement leaves all income statement items together as net income and then lists the current assets and current liabilities separately without trying to match them up and doesn't show the specific components of cash from operations. The investing and financing sections are done the same for the indirect method and the direct method. All amounts represent cash paid or received. Since the cash number is used, there is no need for computations or reconciliations. The investing section reports purchases and sales of long-term assets, like property plant equipment, intangible assets, or securities investments. The financing section reports cash received from borrowing and cash paid for repaying loans from banks. It also reports cash paid to or received from owners such as issuing stock or paying dividends. The key thing to remember about the investing and financing sections is that all the numbers mean the cash amount paid or received. All three sections are combined on the cash flow statement. We will briefly discuss how to interpret the indirect cash flow statement since almost all U.S. companies use the indirect method. Notice that an indirect cash flow statement begins with net income and considers non-cash items to get to the cash from operations. All the items listed in the operating activities section 
is the difference in what is in net income and what is actually cash. The investing section reports cash related to long-term assets and the financing section reports cash related to long-term liability and owner's equity. There are a few things to look for in the operating activities section. Depreciation is a large non-cash expense that reduces income. Since it is not paid in cash, it is added back to show that the company has more cash than net income. It is common for cash to be greater than, in, than net income because cash used to pay for long-term assets is reported in the investing activities section. You should also notice if gains and losses are large relative to net income. Large losses can indicate that the company's assets are losing value much faster than expected. A large negative change in current assets could indicate that current assets are growing faster than they should be. The company may be having trouble collecting accounts receivable or selling inventory. A positive change in current liabilities means the liability is getting larger and the company may not be paying on time. The change in current assets and current liabilities should be proportionate with the growth in the company. If not, a problem with sales or cash flow could be occurring. The investing activity section shows the cause of the change in the value of long-term assets for the two years reported on the balance sheet. You should look to see what types of long-term assets the company is purchasing. Capital expenditures is the term used to indicate the purchase of property, plant, and equipment. Purchases of other companies may indicate expansion of the business. Purchasing intangible assets can be a sign the company is protecting future operations from competitors. Capital expenditures that are about the same as depreciation expense means that the company is just replacing assets and is not growing. More capital expenditures than depreciation expense indicates plans for future growth. Financing activities show where the company gets funds for operating the business and if funds are being repaid to creditors or investors. It reports the cause of the change in the value of long-term liabilities and owner's equity for the two years reported on the balance sheet. The cash amount borrowed and the cash amount repaid is reported. Cash paid to or received from owners, from issuing common stock, buying common stock back from investors, or paying dividends is reported in this section. Borrowing more than repaying could indicate the company is having cash flow problems or the company is planning to invest to grow. Cash generated from financing activities should be used to purchase items reported in the investing section. Borrowing and raising money from investors to cover negative operating cash flows is a sign of operating problems. Companies with excess cash will often return it to investors by buying back stock or paying dividends. After viewing this video, you should be able to read the statement of stockholders' equity and read and interpret the cash flow statement. This video did not discuss how to prepare either statement. Practices you learn will give you examples of the concepts discussed in this video. Work the practice test to verify your understanding and then check your answers to the answers and explanations provided. Thank you for being prepared for class. It is much appreciated.